Welcome to Health Source of Paducah, Kentucky. Today's topic, neck pain, the numbers and treatment. The Journal of the American Medical Association reports that between 1997 and 2005, about $86 billion a year was spent on back and neck pain. These figures are similar to those spent on arthritis, diabetes, and even cancer. Accompanying these figures is the data that people suffering with neck and back pain experience higher levels of depression and general disability. Two reasons cited for the dramatic increase in costs over the study were the escalating price of medications and the growing number of surgical solutions offered to patients. Of interest is the fact that surgical solutions should be considered a last recourse when treating back or neck pain since the results are often unsatisfactory or incomplete. Researchers were curious as to why there had been a 65% increase in costs for these conditions, even when accounting for inflation. Where does the fault lie? While the increase in prescriptions, especially expensive ones, can be partially attributed to both the patient and the drug company's successful marketing, the rising number of surgeries is clearly caused by over-eager surgeons. The availability of regular television advertising for powerful, expensive medications leads patients to arrive at the doctor's office with a goal in mind. Studies show that if a patient requests a specific medication, the doctor will often agree to a prescription even if they feel it isn't the best option for treatment, not only to prescribe inappropriate medications, but also to perform tests such as MRIs even when they aren't called for. There is an arm of the medical community that prefers surgery as a treatment option for severe neck and back pain. There is little corroborating evidence that surgery will help people with chronic, non-structural back and neck pain. Still, the rate of spinal fusions, disc replacements, and other such surgeries continue to rise. So, what does work? The current recommendations for treating both back and neck pain are minimally invasive. Most patients do very well with a combination of over-the-counter anti-inflammatory medications, physical therapy, some form of manual therapy, and time. If the condition becomes chronic, it often takes longer to achieve desired results in treatment. For those who wake up with the proverbial crick in the neck, simple icing, gentle stretching, and some analgesics will usually do the trick in a few days. Postural changes may be advisable. Check your neck position when working at the computer or in bed. Getting a wireless headset to use when on the phone is another easy change to make to reduce strain on neck muscles. If the pain persists and or you experience numbness and pain that radiate down the arms and into the hands, a visit to the doctor is called for. Some of the nerves exiting the spinal column in the neck may be compressed, either by neck muscles or by damaged discs. Both conditions are highly treatable. Your best bet for getting the right treatment is to consult with your physician rather than arrive with a preconceived plan in mind. To find out more information on topics like this, please go to www.healthsourceofpaducah.com.